In this video, I am going to show you what is the best way to remove gutta percha for retreatment cases. What is the fastest, what is the most efficient and what is the most economic way of removing it. Now I remember this small incident regarding a particular case which was referred to me for retreatment and uh, once the case got over uh, in which I actually did shaping uh, in the same appointment and I called up the referring dentist and, he, uh, and I told him that I have removed the gada pocha and I have done the shaping for a particular canal and uh, rather than asking the most relevant questions uh, pertaining to the case the, the the main question and the first question that he asked me was uh, how much time did it take for you to remove the gada pocha and i said it took me maybe 5 to 7 minutes for removing the gada pocha and then eventually it took me half an hour for uh, cleaning and shaping and uh, he was surprised to hear this answer because uh, he told me that he had spent almost two appointment of half an hour to 45 minutes each in removing the gada pocha from the canal and the reaction that I got from him was something like this. Are you serious? So friends, even I am not surprised because a few years earlier, even I used to go through the same phase where it was very difficult for me to remove the gada pocha. And I was always in a habit of removing the gada pocha as soon as possible from the canal. My entire goal in any retreatment case was to reach the apex as soon as possible. And as it is always said, whenever you are in hurry, accidents are going to come. The same applies to retreatment when it comes to gutta pocha removal. So many times it has happened that I have encountered errors during while GP removal that is a, a instrument separation, perforation, ledge formation or maybe transportation of the canal. Now a very common method that was practiced by me and maybe it is practiced by you also is to use some kind of gutta pocha solvent. Uh, to remove the gutta pocha from the canal and to make the uh, GP removal more more easier. Now what I want you to note here is that uh, the solvents which are there in case if they are oil based then there is a possibility that there might be the oil residue still remaining in the root canal dentine or the root canal space. And when it comes to endodontics Today's endodontics is more about bonding. There is resin in a sealer, there is resin in a bonding agent, there is resin in our post endodontic restoration. Therefore, this article clearly mentions that in case if we are using oil based gutta percha solvents, there is a possibility that these solvents in case if some kind of residue remains behind, it is going to interfere with bonding. Therefore, please stay away from gutta percha solvents. Therefore, you must be wondering if I should not be using gutta percha solvents then how do I remove gutta percha from the canal? Well, there are two main methods that I am going to tell you which is going to be very effective, it is going to be very efficient and it is going to be very economic also. Now the first, the most important and the most difficult requirement that we need in any gutta percha removal is patience. Patience is that one thing which all of us lacks. As I have already mentioned earlier, we are always in a hurry to remove the gutta pocha as soon as possible and to reach the apex in a single stroke. Now coming to the second and probably another important requirement and probably I would say the least difficult or the easiest requirement for any gutta pocha removal are these three instruments. That is the endosonic files, the retreatment files and my XP shaper file. So these are the three files that I need for any gutta percha removal from any kind of canal in any retreatment case. Now before we jump on into an actual clinical 
application of these three files research has already proven us that these three files are very efficient when it comes to gutta percha removal so the ultrasonic files they have the ability to soften the gutta percha my retreatment files they have the ability to remove the main core of the gutta percha and the hardened harden sealer and my xp uh, shaper has the ability to remove all the remnants that are remaining behind after the retreatment files have been used now before we go on to the clinical application video i hope you have subscribed to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon now uh, starting with this case this is a case of a maxillary first molar where there is a periapical lesion seen with the mesiobuccal root now uh, my goal in this case was to retreat only the mesiobuccal root that is do a selective retreatment for the uh, mb root uh, probably there was a missing uh, mb2 canal so the first file that was used in this case was the endosonic files now these endosonic files they have the ability to soften the gutta percha mass and create some kind of pathway or maybe i would say a initial glide path for my retreatment files to go inside the canal whenever we uh, start with a retreatment case and once we have removed the core there is this hardened gutta percha with, with the hardened sealer therefore sometimes it is difficult for me to directly start or instrument the canal with my rotary files therefore these ultrasonic files they have the ability to generate heat and they have the ability to soften the gutta percha so that the path so that the passage of the retreatment files inside the canals becomes much more easier now these retreatment files they are available in a size of 25 30 and 35 however i am using only the 25 number file now these file they are available in a loose form and they need to be attached to a, a special chuck that is available now this chuck is is different for different scaler machines therefore whenever you are ordering such kind of files please do mention the dealer as to what company scaler do you have so that the same compatible chuck is been sent to you and you will be able to use these files in a efficient and an effective manner now once the ultrasonic files have done their job and they have created a space or some kind of uh, uh, glide path initial glide path for my retreatment files to go so the second step is to use these retreatment files now these retreatment files are going to remove a large chunk or i would say maximum chunk of the gutta percha from the canal now these retreatment files they have uh, a fluid design by which all the gutta percha or debris or the sealer debris whatever is formed is extruded out of the canal and none of the debris actually gets pushed beyond the apical foramen now these reendo files are available in four sizes uh the tape sizes for all the files is 30 number but the taper is different for each and every file so the number 1 has 12% taper second has 8% third has 6% and the last has 4% in my daily practice i am not using the first and the second file i am using only the third and the fourth file because i don't want over enlargement of the canal so the recommended torque for the number 3 and the number 4 files the average torque at which it has to be used is 1 and the uh, rpm speed uh, the manufacturer says that it should be used at 150 to 300 rpm however i use it at a slightly higher rpm of 350 to 400 now here i would like to appreciate this manufacturer that uh, it has actually mentioned the number of times that a particular file can be used before it should be discarded i suppose no other manufacturers gives such, such kind of recommendations so as you can see here the number 3 and the number 4 file can be used uh, for five times without any breakage now the uh, ultrasonic files and the retreatment files they have already done their job now the next step that we need to do is to remove the gutta percha that is sticking to the walls and as i mentioned earlier the third file in the sequence is the xp shaper from fkg now this file has a spiral configuration and uh, it has the ability to scrape the walls and remove whatever gutta percha is remaining and sticking to the walls because i have spent countless amount of time removing this gp that is stuck to the walls and i have failed miserably earlier also so this xp shaper file has the ability to remove gutta percha that is sticking to the walls now this file 
has to be used not at our regular RPM that we use our rotary files. This file has to be used at double the speed. Therefore, it, it has to be used at a speed or of 850 to 1000 RPM. I am using this file at 1000 RPM on an average and the torque that is recommended for this file is 1. So as you can easily compare the pre-operative and the uh, and the mid-treatment uh, radiograph of this uh, of this case, you can clearly appreciate that the entire GP has been removed from the mesiobuccal canal without any remnants remaining. So I hope this uh, protocol is very very clear for you, and uh, this is the fastest, the efficient, and the most economic way of removing gutta percha from the canal. Now to go one step further, there have been cases where there is a ledge formation and there is still some amount of gutta percha that is remaining in the apical third. Now no matter how much ever I am trying to negotiate that, uh, that apical third but the file always stops at the ledge or some kind of obstacle is there inside the canal. Now it does not make sense using gutta percha solvent here because I have already discussed earlier that it interferes with bonding uh, when it comes to using a resin sealer or for that matter doing a post core or just doing a post endodontic core. Now at this point no matter how much ever I pre of the file it does not have the ability to go inside or penetrate that gutta percha mass because that gutta percha mass is quite hard it is quite rigid because of the sealer and because of aging over a period of time. Therefore, to tackle this difficult situation and to explore the or to negotiate this hard to reach area, you can use the endosonic files to easily soften the katapacha mass, to easily negotiate the canal and to achieve a glide path and patency with that particular canal. To understand this more in detail, let's look at a clinical case. Now before I actually explain you uh, the case, uh, let me give you a short history of, uh, of this anatomy of the distal root. Now this was a mandibular second molar and the distal root showed a very different kind of anatomy as it is seen normally. Uh, so any distal root if it has two canals or maybe if there are two splits that is single canal in the coronal and the middle third and if there is some kind of apical split then this apical split is normally present uh, buccally and lingually but this was a case where the split was actually in the mesial and the distal direction so this is a very uncommon occurrence and uh, it is not seen very frequently now for this case the gutta percha from the distal canal was removed very easily and I didn't have any difficulties but the gutta percha from the mesial split was very difficult because the split was starting from the apical third. No matter how much amount of uh, files that I used in a pre-curved manner I in, in fact I to some uh, in fact to such an extent in, uh, in uh, frustration I used gutta percha solvent also but I was not able to remove this uh, gutta percha that was there in the apical in the mesial apical split therefore to my savior were these endosonic files so I had the ability to pre cup this endosonic files and guide them and and uh, and uh, insert them in the mesial apical split and they very effectively went inside the canal they uh, softened the gutta percha mass and the entire gutta percha was removed from the canal as you can see here this is a poor this is the post-op image after the gutta percha removal. so friends like this video please do comment below as to what is your protocol when it comes to gutta percha removed from the canal and please do comment below in case if you are facing some kind of difficulty and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And please do share this video with all of your friends. See you again with the next video.